Hello and welcome to this joint SCVO and Travel Know How Scotland webinar looking at active and sustainable travel planning within the workplace. The purpose of the, the session today is to um, look at explaining the benefits of workplace travel planning. With COP26 in Glasgow just around the corner, we're now looking at what what everybody can do to take action on climate change and to put in place plans to achieve the Scottish Government's net zero targets. The purpose of the webinar today is to, to find out about the many benefits um, of workplace travel planning, both for the organisations and the individual, and also to look at the resources that are available um, out there and how you can access them. So looking first at the travel hierarchy, this is the travel hierarchy uh, according to the Scottish Government and Transport Scotland. And obviously in the last 18 months, we've seen this change slightly in terms of a new category at the very um, top there in terms of the need to travel. Obviously COVID-19 has meant that a lot of us have changed our working practices um, and that's likely to be a, a change that continues or at least part of, of, of a new normal. Um, so the question being, the first question that we should pose is, is there a need to travel? Is there a need to commute? Is there a need for business travel? Can that be done remotely? Can it be done through um, video conferencing, et cetera? And then looking at prioritizing active modes of travel ahead of sustainable modes and then gradually down to single car occupancy, um, air travel, et cetera. So just looking at the, the priority and the kind of questions that we should be asking ourselves. Um, as we select which mode is most appropriate. Now, there's, there's a number of benefits to, to workplaces and to individuals from looking at travel planning within the workplace. There's obviously cost benefits um, in terms of, you know, being able to cut mileage costs, for example, cut car parking costs. There can be reductions in staff downtime that's, that's caused through travelling, reductions in the cost of running a fleet. Um, it can also be really beneficial from a corporate point of view in terms of corporate image, you know, being seen to be doing the right things um, in terms of the environment, but also in terms of the health and well-being of your staff. Um, there's, there's research that shows that more active and sustainable travel helps to improve health and also reduce absenteeism within workforces. It's also um, it's very good in terms of being an employer of choice, a responsible employer who supports um, more active and sustainable travel within the workplace is, is an attractive offering. There's also the, the, the kind of social and corporate responsibility elements of it in terms of you know working towards environmental targets supporting the government's net zero policies etc there can also be impacts around local congestion for example if you have deliveries or etc and um, looking at kind of access issues as well can be resolved through looking at alternative modes of travel Looking at it from an individual's point of view, more active and sustainable travel gives opportunities to add physical activity into your work, your daily life, for example. Um, it can reduce journey travel times. Um, it can substantially reduce the cost of travel, even removing the need to own a car in some respects. It can provide better work-life balance through more flexible working and um, less need to travel for work maybe opportunities for a flexible start to allow to fit with sustainable transport, public transport options, for example. It also can allow for a shift in kind of attitude towards um, travel and those who are able to, to choose different modes of travel um, in terms of, you know, more people being um, allowed to gain the benefits from a shift in travel parks, for example. So not just seniority for allocation of car parking spaces, but maybe there's a cycle mileage for business travel, for example. Um, so looking at it slightly differently and trying to incentivize and reward more active and sustainable options of travel. Um, it also can reduce car park pressures and ensure that those people that need a vehicle for whatever reasons are assured those spaces for example and it also can help with stress relief as well 
So we know the, the, the kind of physical and mental benefits of um, mental health benefits of more active travel. So it is all about, and COP26 is all about everybody pulling in the same direction. It's about knowing that, that working towards the net zero targets is the right thing to be doing. And the Scottish government has set some ambitious targets to look at achieving that net zero um, emissions target by 2045. Um, and looking at, when you look at it from transport, domestic transport, um, accounts for more than 25% of all of Scotland's emissions um, back in 2019. There's a need to look at sustainable business travel in terms of the bigger picture and how it fits into the national measurement framework and links into the economic, environmental, equality um, and well-being strategic outcomes. So it's, it's more than just about looking at it in isolation. Um, and it's about us all playing our part. It's about working alongside the government, local provide, um, transport providers, employers and employees to work together to work out what works best within your organisation. And, and the Scottish Government have announced that they want to look at reducing by 20% the car kilometres by 2030 in, in this, as part of this net zero target. So they are looking to push a reduction in car usage um, for both com commuting and, and business travel. So there's a target to, to work towards there. Thinking about some of the challenges and barriers to adoption, um, we did some research at the very start of lockdown um, last year where we were asking organisations what, what they believe to be kind of the barriers to adoption when considering more active and sustainable modes of travel. And some of the things that came up um, most predominantly are highlighted in this graph here. So the lack of available public transport that was either on available route or the correct times, a lack of budget um, within the organisation, often a lack of focus or priority put on it within the organisations. And often staff resistance to make changes due to possibly the distance to be traveled, the time, etc. So there's a number of different barriers that, that come up. And I would pose a question for everybody to consider looking at your own organization. You know, what do you feel are the challenges facing your workplace? Are there specific barriers that, that your employees are faced with? And, and how can you look at addressing some of those? What measures could be put in place to try and overcome some of those barriers? Now, as with most things, there's always a challenge and there's possibly a corresponding opportunity or action to come with it. And I just wanted to use this slide to demonstrate where some of the barriers that come up through um, you know, individuals put up as being a barrier to using more active or sustainable travel can be have a corresponding opportunity or action that the workplace can take to try and combat that. So a classic one is the, the weather. Um, but there are things that can be done around, you know, education around and awareness of appropriate facilities or clothing that can be used. This idea of planning ahead for your journey. So journey planning the route, but also having access to drying rooms, showers, lockers, etc. at work to be able to combat some of the concerns around that. Convenience is often um, an inherent um, barrier. People don't want to change their, their ways. They've always done it one way. It's convenient. They're not willing to consider another. Again, it's about education and, and bringing in um, as much information and making it as easily accessible to your workforce. So things like personalised travel planning, looking at what their daily commute is, why they choose the, the manner they do, and looking at what the alternatives are and presenting some viable alternatives to them and talking them through what that could, could look like. And we'll go on to talk about um, various personalised travel planning options that are available um, throughout Scotland. Again, looking at this kind of lack of priority and lack of budget, again, it's about sharing um, information and raising the business case within the workplace for um, looking at a change and that can be done internally and, and kind of from the bottom up in terms of you know feeding off each other, sharing ideas, 
having a debate about what would work really well within your organisation. Poor transport, public transport connections is something that comes up a lot. Lack of routes, not making public transport a very ultra attractive alternative to a lot of people. Again, that's where easy access to information, public transport timetables, etc., a flexible approach to start times, for example, can all help with that. And there's a lot of public um, transport providers that are um, have great kind of collaboration and are willing to work to, to find alternative solutions, but also there's the the resources such as Travel Line Scotland that offer personalised travel planning routes based on public transport. So you can plan ahead, know your route, know your um, the timetables, et cetera, and the, and the buses to take. And if there can be a flexible approach to start and end times, for example, then that allows for more of a more um, sustainable route to be more viable. There's then also a lot of fear um, around safety, particularly attached to, to cycling and cycling on roads, et cetera. So this is where, you know, investment in infrastructure, access to funding to put in cycle paths and cycle storage provisions, et cetera, can help. And there's a lot of advice and guidance available throughout Scotland in terms of training and um, guidance on how to put that infrastructure in place, as well, again, as education on route plans and mapping and planning ahead for your journey. So where there are challenges, there are also opportunities to, to take action within the workplace and each will be very different for each workplace. I wanted just to touch on very briefly um, what we mean by a, a workplace travel plan and the kind of key aspects within it. And um, I'm not gonna go into this in any detail here, but this is a, a Travel Know How Scotland website gives a lot of detail on this, gives templates that you can use that actually allow you to, to input your own um, workplace travel plan. But I wanted just to kind of highlight some of the key steps um, involved in that and start to get people thinking about kind of what are the main elements that they need to concentrate on. Um, and those are about, you know, looking at your organisation strategy and how the travel plan ties into that. Um, what's your vision for the organisation and how can that be delivered through the, the travel plan. Look at how you can allocate roles and responsibilities throughout the business, you know, lead from the top, set examples and, and work with the whole organisation to understand the challenges and the barriers and how those can be best overcome. It's about understanding current culture as well. So it's about, you know, asking the questions, how are people travelling to work? How are they travelling for business? Why are they choosing to travel in the way they are? would there be anything that would make them consider traveling in a different way? So it's about understanding both the barriers, but also um, what opportunities there are to look at changing behavior. So gathering insight about that, and that can be done through employee travel surveys. It's then about setting objectives and targets, both ambitious, but also realistic in different areas, depending on the focus that your organization wants to take. And then based on those, delivering a action plan that is specific and bespoke to your organization that, that drives forward some of those activities that has responsibilities allocated to it and which you can monitor on an ongoing basis. As with anything, if there is the opportunity to add some budget to that, that allows to you know, invest in some of the infrastructure that may be required to support that, but also will show how there are a lot of funding schemes available throughout Scotland for organisations to access. So the, the financial, while a budget can help with the promotion, et cetera, internally, there are routes to um, and support available, funding support available throughout Scotland. So that's kind of the kind of main steps. And so you can find more details on that within the Travel Know How Scotland website. The key, the key of that action plan that we talked about and the kind of the bespoke um, plan of measures that, that would be put into each organization. These can fall into kind of four categories. We've talked about information being key, you know, easy access to information about what all the travel options are, whether that's timetables, whether that's installing the Travel Line Scotland widget onto your website that allows people to go directly in and get, get all of the, the timetable information. It's also about engagement, looking at opportunities to work together to encourage 
whether that is encouraging through cycling groups, car sharing, lunchtime walking groups, a company-wide personalised travel planning um, campaign, for example. It's about how you engage and encourage um, interest in the workplace travel plan. There's also kind of more practical elements of it in terms of policy and enforcement type angle. So looking at specific guidance around car parking, for example, addressing um, business travel policies, looking at, you know, is there, is there an argument to say that we need to look at including a cycle mileage as part of our business travel policy? Um, look at financial incentive schemes such as annual season ticket discounts or cycle to work, salary sacrifice schemes, etc. Flexible working um, policies to allow for more um, flexibility around travel, for example. And um, there's also then, as I say, the facilities and funding aspect of it. And we talked about, you know, that certain things need to be in place to encourage more active travel, cycling, parking, secure storage, maybe access to e-bikes, for example, for pool bike use. Um, exam and we'll, we'll talk about it later as I show you some of the, the examples of the resources that are available, but there, there can be emergency um, services available for bike repairs, for example, EV charging facilities, all those kind of things need to be taken into account as part of your plan. And a mixture of all four of those categories, the kind of carrot element and some of the stick elements in terms of enforcement are key in terms of how you balance your workplace travel plan and what's going to work best within your organization for your employees. So another question to consider at this point is what kind of support do you think um, would be of most help to your organization? What approaches do you think would work best for your employees? And again, that's about you understanding their journeys to work through an employee travel survey, but also knowing your staff and what works, the, the limitations of um, possible buildings or sites, but also understanding the roles that each person plays within the organization and how active and sustainable travel can, can slot into those roles. So talking about some of the resources that are available, obviously I mentioned the, the travel no, um, travel know how Scotland website on that website you can register completely free of charge on, on that website and there's a whole host of um, information and resources and templates available for organizations to download and adapt and the idea is that it's um, as simple and straightforward for people to, to use so there's a template and um, travel plan document with guidance notes to talk you through each section of it that can be completed there's an employee travel survey template on there and um, there's a whole host of um, promotional posters, et cetera, that can be downloaded and adapted for workplaces. There's also um, a, a wealth of advice and guidance on, on various aspects of active and sustainable travel and the various delivery partners. And um, it takes a very multimodal approach looking at all different um, aspects of it. And the idea being that your travel plan is bespoke to your organization and will feature the modes that are required to, to suit the, the requirements of your organization. So it's a really good place to start and it will take you through the process and um, kind of on a stage by stage. So it's a, it's a good resource to, to kind of start off with. There is a lot of help at hand within, within Scotland and these are just a few of the organizations um, that work in the active and sustainable travel arena and all have resources both aimed at workplaces and at individuals that you can access. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend the next part of the presentation talking you through some of those and highlighting some of the key aspects for each offering. The Way to Work set website, um, again, is a good base point. The, this is a way to work as an organization made up a number of the active travel delivery partners. And what it does is break down into each mode, the various resources that are available and um, with hints and tips, but also access straight into those partners as well. So again, it is a good place from a workplace point of view to, to have a look and get an overview of the different things that are available. Maybe you're thinking about, you know, kind of pushing and promoting cycling within the organization. How can we do that? There's also some um, really good information and guidance on behavior change tools and resources within the website as well. It's worth looking at, at that. 
Energy Savings Trust um, are they manage the, the Scottish government's approach to um, electric vehicles and electric bikes and have a number of different schemes that are open to um, workplaces and um, looking at everything from kind of low carbon transport business loans to charging point funding, e-bike loans, and also they are managing the low emission zone support work as well. So it's worth having a look there at what resources are available and funding that they can offer. Energy Savings Trust also offer a number of um, schemes directly for individuals, for employees. So looking again at e-bike loan schemes, um, and they do offer um, e-bike trials as well as part of that. And then there's electric vehicle and domestic charging funding points, as well as, um, as previously linked into the low emission zone support, they are offering funding to support households that are um, affected by the low emission zones that are coming into place in four cities across Scotland. So these are, you know, this, this information is one that you can share with your employees to give them access to various different opportunities if they're thinking about e-vehicles, this may be a, an option for them. So there's a good resource there. So also in terms of shared transport, I wanted to draw your attention to Como UK. They have a really useful action kit that's available on their website. And I've got the link's on there as well, that just kind of talks about, um, how organisations can start to, to encourage more sustainable ways of travelling, looking at shared um, transport options, whether that's car sharing, car club type approach to carpool, uh, to pool cars, for example, for business travel, um, bike share schemes and how organisations can get involved and encourage use of those for, for business travel and commuting, etc. So there's a whole host of different and um, resources available there and it gives a really good background in the whole area of um, shared transport. Cycling Scotland, um, they offer a huge amount of resources to organisations um, across Scotland. They have their Cycle Friendly Employer Award, um, which works across different in categories for schools and um, housing, NHS, etc, but also other categories. And they provide a framework, resources, and one-to-one -one support to increase employee um, cycle rates within the organisation and to work towards accreditation. They also um, offer funding as part of that and that's facilities to go towards, you know, showers, bike racks, etc., um, as well as cycle training. So they're a really good resource for if you're keen to look at what you can do to increase the number of cyclists within your organisation working towards the Cycle Friendly Employer Award and accreditation is, is a great way to start that. And there are you know, um, funding pots available to support the facilities and the infrastructure that needs to be in place to, to help you do that. Pass for All um, offers business support through things such as the work, um, Walk at Work Award. So similar to Cycle Friendly Employer Award, it is an accreditation based on encouraging and promoting everyday walk-in within the organisation. Um, they also run the Step Count Challenge, which again is a great way to encourage um, more work, walking within the workplace. It's kind of that, that competition element that can work really um, well. Pass for All also manage the Smarter Choices, Smarter Places Open Fund within Scotland, and that's available to public, third and community sector organisations across Scotland. And is a great opportunity to look at securing some funding for any particular initiatives that you want to do. So I'd encourage if there is a particular idea that you want to look at adopting within your organisation to promote more active or sustainable travel, um, but there's limited budgets or funding available for it within your own organisation, look at whether there is an option to put together a proposal through the Open Fund. They have also just launched a new website, which again is aimed at giving specific advice around funding and the information. So to help organisations source the right information, and that's called sustainabletravel.com. Sorry, dot Scott. Um, in terms of more shared um, transport and looking at understanding more about um, how people travel, there is lift share and mobility ways. Now, lift share is the leading car sharing um, brand 
within the UK. And obviously, parsing is a difficult topic at the moment in light of the, the pandemic and the issues around um, life sharing. It's not, it's not actively encouraged at the moment. However, longer term, as we come out of this pandemic, it absolutely is part of the mix in terms of offering viable alternatives to single car occupancy, particularly where large distances involved or rural locations. So it is something that does need to be considered as part of the mix. Also, as part of the, the kind of lift share group, there is a sub brand called Mobility Ways. Now, this is about um, this is about helping organisations to achieve net zero commute by looking and understanding um, the the data. Really looking at understanding how their their employees travel, how they're making decisions, and how they can best um, kind of combat that. So it looks at they run scoping exercises that look at um, travel data, collect travel data from your employees, and then they scope that in terms of what are all the different travel options that are available to your workforce. So it's worth having a look at that um, if you're interested in understanding a, a bit more about the data and how to utilise that data to really drive behaviour change. Living Streets is another walking based um, organisation that, that looks at promoting um, daily opportunities for walking and um, its walking works program is about embedding that walking culture within the organizations and there's various different guidance that they give in terms of policy guidance but also training and um, the ability to do kind of walks and, and pledge opportunities so another, again another great resource for getting different ideas about what could work within your organization um, Fourth Environment Link, um, based in kind of Stirling and Fourth Valley area of Falkirk, they run a number of different um, travel hubs and have various travel um, officers in place. And while not a kind of national resource, they do run a couple of schemes that I wanted to flag um, as of interest because they are things that they're looking to, to maybe push out nationally. So they have a, a, a bike medic service, which is a service contract employee type subscription where people have emergency cycle cover. So kind of AA for cyclists, basically, that they'll come out and support and repair um, bikes should you need it if you're on kind of commuting or travel um, business travel purposes. So a great kind of backup um, and support for people that are thinking about moving from maybe car to cycling, but are concerned about, you know, well, what if something happens? And this is a good fallback um, opportunity. They also do a lot of guided rides. They offer kind of doctor bike schemes as well to, to do bike maintenance, etc. And they manage um, bike fleet services and shared schemes across the region. But worth getting in touch with if that's something that falls within your, if you're, you fall within the Fourth Valley, uh, sorry, Fourth Environment Link area, but also if the, the bike medic type concept is something that is of interest to you, I know they'd be um, keen to have a conversation about how, to, how you can look at setting that up. In terms of um, looking at active and sustainable travel from the health and wellbeing point of sight, the Healthy Working Lives offer great resources um, for workplaces in terms of how to encourage more um, well-being um, within the workplace and active travel being a key part of that in terms of increasing your physical activity on a daily basis and also you're looking at your stress and mental um, health well-being and they offer some great resources and there's a free advice line um, and online training that can be done. They also offer a accreditation scheme as well which again um, looking at it from an employer of choice point of view is a really good um, accreditation to have in place. Shows the value um, that you place on the workforce, for example. Um, <clears throat> I wanted just to touch on um, ScotRail in terms of some of the services they offer. They offer businesses and employees season ticket um, schemes and savings. They also have a business travel um, online tool, which allows you to plan your journeys um, on their app. There's various different um, ticket options available and they also have carbon calculators, for example, so you can look at your carbon footprint aspects of your journeys, um, as well as having a lot of cycling facilities and journey planning options as well. So if, if again, 
depending on your workplace and the work that you're doing, whether um, travel by rail is an option, a viable option for a lot of your staff, it's worth having a chat with um, Scott Rail and looking at the options that they can provide um, for your workplace. I've mentioned Traveling Scotland a couple of times before. This is Scotland's National Public Transport Information Service and um, covers all bus, rail, coach, air and ferry times within Scotland. And it offers a number of different um, solutions that are, are useful for workplaces. It has what it calls a journey planner in a box, which is an easy to install um, widget that you can put onto your website. It's fully customizable and allows your organization to provide visitors and employees with tailored public transport information and um, to get them to and from your, your particular premises. So kind of when you're looking at how to get to us, look at, you know, putting in these kind of um, resources first before directing people on how to, to travel to your work both by car, look at how they can walk, cycle, use public transport, for example. There's also a timetable find, um, finder, which again can be um, installed directly onto any internet sites, internal systems that you have that allows employees and visitors easy access to public transport timetables. So taking the, the onerous element out of finding out the information. They can also offer a bulk journey planner. So this allows the organization to, to upload postcodes, for example, of employees and visitors, possibly um, students for universities, et cetera, to create personalized travel and um, sorry, public transport journey plan for each individual between those two locations. So great if you're running an event, for example, or if you want to to give um, a demonstration to each of your employees about what the travel alternative travel options are to them for them to be able to consider. So it's certainly worth looking at and a great resource to add completely free of charge to your, to your website. I just wanted to finish off today by you know, saying that as I said, this is a, we're offering this in partnership with um, SCVO and, and we would like to, to provide further support to members and voluntary organizations by offering um, training sessions on specific topics relating to workplace travel planning. If this is of interest to your organization, please get in touch. You know, the topic areas could cover anything from how to develop an employee survey to understand more about travel habits and how, how we can look to adapt those. It could be about developing your own um, workplace travel action plan. What are the bespoke measures and targets that you need to be in place? or a session um, focusing particularly on employee engagement and how to measure effectively and track the impact on your organization's carbon footprint. So if that is something that's of interest to you, please get in touch. Um, my details are here, shown at um, travelknowhowscotland.co.uk. Um, thank you for your time today. Hopefully that has given you a overview of the many benefits to considering workplace travel planning and the many resources um, that are available for workplaces to access across Scotland. If there's any more information that you need, um, if there's any questions that you have, please feel free to get in touch with me. And thank you for your time. Thank you.